Hi, Jesse. I saw most of the rest of you on the other meeting. Kevin might be joining us late. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm probably going to sneeze about 10 times, then I'll be done. <laughs> So Erin, are we ready? Um, we are broadcasting. Okay, great. Then I will call this meeting to order this special meeting of the Ferndale School District and School Board, August 4th, 2020. Uh, first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you will join me, we will start the meeting with our pledge. <laughs> I think we'll have a flag in just a moment. One moment. Sorry, I had this up. We can move ahead. All right, so we'll recite the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Since tonight's special meeting has only one item, this should be a relatively easy decision. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as written. So I'll move to adopt the agenda as written. All right, it's been, there's a motion to adopt the agenda as written. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The one topic on our agenda tonight is reopening school in, on September 1st or in September rather. And I apologize for the short notice for this meeting. However, our current situation is changing rapidly and we realize families are anxious to receive the latest information. We learned that Dr. Quinn and the other superintendents in Whatcom County were gonna meet with officials from the Whatcom County Health Department earlier today. We know that 60 members of the Ferndale Reopening Task Force were holding their fifth meeting earlier this evening. Therefore, we decided to call this special meeting so we could hear the latest recommendations from the Health Department, the Task Force, and the District Administration. With that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Quinn. Thank you, um, President McLaurin. So as you mentioned, um, the five officials from the Whatcom County Health Department met with the seven Whatcom County superintendents this afternoon at one o'clock. Um, the purpose of the meeting was for um, Dr. Stern to tell us that he would be issuing a letter to all of us um, strongly recommending that we do not um, commence with in-person learning in September. Um, I'm not sure this is surprising news to any of us. It's a little disappointing um, as we've been planning for um, at least seeing our students some of the time. Um, Dr. Stern's letter, um, he said he would get it out after five o'clock tonight. I haven't seen it yet, but he's also putting out a press release. Um, he talked about the rationale for his decision, which is based on um, a growing number of cases and also a trajectory that's going in the wrong direction. Um, as you've probably heard, um, most of the districts up and down the I-5 corridor on the west side of the state have made similar announcements. Um, he 
Dr. Stern talked about um, recent meeting with health officials from across the state where they're working to define metrics for um, something predictable for opening. I don't know if these have been um, published yet, um, but he talked about um, the metric of 25 cases per 100,000 population, 100,000 population in a 14 day period. 25 or lower, it would be safe for us to consider reopening as normal. Um, 75 or more per 100,000 population in a 14 day period, it would, the health department would recommend um, shutting things down that area between 50 and 70 or 25 and 75 it is maybe where um, there would be some some um, allowances for in person under certain conditions right now um, in the in Whatcom County overall the um, rate per 100,000 in the last 14 days is 63. So it's below the 75, but as Dr. Stern told us today, the trend line is going in the wrong direction. And the both the trend line is growing in the wrong direction and the number of contacts per new case is going in the wrong direction. And so um, knowing that school districts have to make a decision, um, they can't, we, we're trying not to decide on an hour's notice or a day's notice like we did in the spring. Um, it was his strong recommendation that we move forward with plans for a virtual opening for all students or most students. Um, he did talk about some customized individual exceptions that the health department would work with us um, to, to maybe determine. So the reason we sh I shared this information with the reopening task force, um, the last two hours we were together, um, we spent the first 30 minutes or so talking about this. Um, I can't tell you that there was a formal recommendation that came out of that group, um, but I think there was a resignation that um, this is probably, that it, that it would be hard to go against a strong recommendation for the health mm -hmm. and safety of our community. Um, we, all seven superintendents um, were, like I say, at the meeting, they, we agreed that none of us tonight would speak for any of the other districts because like me, they all want, wanted to go back and talk to their school boards and their task forces and their um, leadership groups um, before, they make any kind of announcement, but they did, we committed that everyone would have some sort of an official announcement by the end of this week. And with that, I would be happy to entertain discussion, questions. I, I guess the last thing I would say is that um, the reason I called this meeting tonight was that I knew that the health department was gonna come to us with some kind of new guidance and I wanted to be able to run it by you because um, we are finalizing our reopening plan and I wanted to make sure that we were going in a direction that you were comfortable with. Um, we still plan to bring you a formal reopening plan on August 18th, but there's no use our, our heading down some avenue um, without your weighing in and say, yes, that's the direction you need to go. So I will, with that, questions, comments. And Linda, aren't there um, indications that the if hot spots, if you will, for Whatcom County are in Ferndale, Custer, Linden area, or is that not accurate? No, that's pretty accurate. Um, I do. I have screen sharing. What, um, Aaron, I don't know if I have the ability to share my screen. John's on the way. Um, Aaron, you should be able to share. 
Okay, where is that screen share? Oh, share screen. Um, this is, um, these are from the health department's um, website. This is, um, this is one graphical kind of um, representation of during the past two weeks. Um, and it's more in terms of, uh, I think, more in terms of, of actual numbers, but I had another page, let me just see, um, that showed numbers for Ferndale. Unfortunately, um, we are, in the last two weeks, our, um, we, we are, have had the work, can you see that now? Yeah. Can you see the blue map? So these are not real numbers because they're translated into um, rate per 100,000. And obviously we don't have 100,000 in all of these communities. So you can see if we had 100,000 people in Ferndale, our rate is 140. That's the um, number that I told you needed to be below 75 or preferably below 25 to be perfectly safe to open. And you can see the numbers of the, this, this is, was last updated on yesterday and it's on the last 14 days. So in this, the, the average for the county is 63 cases per 100,000 but you can see we're bringing up the average. Um, so the rate in Ferndale is 140, Meridian 121. Um, Linden has gone down some. Melinda? Can you put back that graph? The I one think with all the different lines? I think I can, right there. Have you got yes, it? Yes, that one. So that dotted line down at 25, the horizontal line, that's the one where they want us to be at. The last time we were at that is about, it looks like about June 8th or so. And I want people to, and I'm not a professor, but maybe I play one on Zoom meetings, I don't know. But I, wanna, I want people to appreciate how quickly that number can jump from 25 per 100,000 up to where we are, where we were last week or so at around 150. Mm -hmm. And that number is in the summer with people starting to wear masks more often, with people starting to social distance more often, hopefully, but it still jumps that fast. If we were to take children and to open up schools, where you know we're asking them to wear masks and and such but groups of children and large groups especially that slope that we took from Ju july 10th to oh about july 20th where it was really going up that yellow was really go going up if you open schools as well that may as well be a vertical line the I think the exponential spread of this virus is not something we've really seen quite yet, but if we open schools, we will. I just wish that that graph could be something that was a little bit more user friendly in showing here's our community of 12,000 people, which includes not just our school district, well, that's, I guess, just the Ferndale city limits. So if we took our entire school district and all of those people in it, how does that yellow line translate into our neighbors, our grandparents, our friends, et cetera? Because the number of 150 per 100,000, it sounds really low. It sounds like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. But this is exponential. And if we have that number of 150 and put it into a school district, we will all really learn what exponents are very quickly mm -hmm. and at a high price tag. I, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing, but that's, you know, um, that's some of the information that um, Dr. Stern shared with us today.
All right. Well, it's certainly sobering news, but not totally unexpected. I know it's going to be difficult for our kids and our teachers and our families, um, but it's, I, I think it's where we have to be. We certainly, I don't think we should go against the recommendations of our public health team. So, um, so I know we're meeting on August 18th to approve a formal um, reopening plan for OSPI. And it's my understanding that what you need from us tonight is basically a thumbs up to move ahead with distance learning as our, for our opening of schools in September. So um, board members, any other questions? If not, I'll ask you just to indicate your support of Linda and her team moving ahead with the plan for distance learning. It's not a formal motion, correct, Linda? No. no, no it's, it's but it's more of a consensus that we, we, we understand and are supporting of what we're doing. So We have a resolution that we'll give you on the 18th. But like I said, this is a temperature check, a, yeah. um, I'm, we're just asking for your endorsement. Um, and how how to proceed or your and i think our, our families need to know this as quickly as possible because they're trying to make plans and and i know that there are lots of you know questions and and i know there's lots of work being done so this isn't a um, I'm, I'm not dissing anything that's been happening it's just people are very anxious and so if if this is direction we're going then i hope we can let our families know pretty quickly so with that, I'll just ask for, um, I'll just go through those of you who are here and you can give me a thumbs up or if you think we should go in a different direction, you can feel free to state that. So, um, Leanne? So I think this is the direction we have to go in. I don't think it's a huge surprise. Um, I know how disappointed we all are, but when we put health and safety first, uh, I think it's, I think it's our only choice. And I know people talk about the health and safety of those children who can't be in school and being on the task force for reopening school. I've been so impressed by the focus and intention and uh, the intent to support the students that need us the most. And so I'm counting on that happening. And while this is not a perfect solution, I think it is the best solution for everyone. Jesse? All right. Melinda? I absolutely 100% support um, the district going for distance learning. I think that there are numerous drawbacks to distance learning compared to in-person learning but I am not willing to put the health and safety and lives of the Ferndale community uh, at risk by opening schools. So 100% support you. Thanks. And I as well, totally behind you, you and the, the admin team and the teachers to pull this together. And now we know our direction for sure and efforts can go in that regard. I don't think Kevin has joined us, so. Um, I, I will communicate with him. Andrew, there is one question in the questions tonight that just asked whether the health department um, dif differentiated anything about young students. Um, the, the health department did today talk about new research on, on transmission by children um, and referenced several studies. Um, I don't think they talked, I, th I think most people are in, in the health department still in agreement that Young children tend to um, get it, manifest symptoms less often, but that they still are transmitters. And um, that was one of the things that they did reference today is new research on children and um, their, their role in transmitting. And so, you know, I've had several families write to me and I totally understand and say, why can't we just send our children to school if we're comfortable with it and the people who aren't comfortable don't send their children to school. Um, but the answer has to do somewhat also with staff. Um, 
You know, I, I don't know if you read the piece that I sent you last night about the Arizona superintendent who um, had three teachers in the summer who were following all the protocols and one of them is now dead. And, um, you know, we just have to, we have to worry about all of the people that are counting on us to make decisions, I guess. And this one is torturous, it really is, because I know the bind it puts a lot of families in. But um, anyway, thank you. Um, and, and so how will, we, how will we notify our families and community about this? Um, our executive team and um, communications department have um, outlined a plan that includes my sending out um, a short letter tonight to our district staff and administrators, just um, letting them know by tomorrow, if we don't have it tonight, we'll have a link to the um, letter from the uh, health department and the press release they're putting out either tonight or in the morning. So tomorrow by, before noon tomorrow, um, we will get something out to all of our district families um, that has a link to the health department's um, recommendations. And we'll also send out a media release. And then um, we've, we started last week with Thursday, four o'clock Facebook Live, um, answer your question sessions. So that seems like a logical time this week at four o'clock we'll entertain questions about this big news this week and um, then just continue to communicate in the um, ways that we, we just, I just came from the communication subgroup of the reopening task force. And one of the other things that we talked about is doing some um, very targeted um, Zoom coffee hours, question and answers, with um, using Rav Dylan um, volunteered to do one with our Punjabi speaking families. Mm. Um, we'll ask David perhaps to do one with our um, our Spanish speaking families, and then find someone to do one with our Russian speaking families. Um, and Rav had a, has a very good plan for sending out a personal email to invite those people. I will attend, but then I'll have translators. I'll attend to help answer questions. But so whether that happens this week or next week, that's also part of our communication plan. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other board members have questions or comments? I'd just like oh. to say that I wish that there was um, that all of these heavy decisions didn't necessarily have to land on local school districts. I was yeah. telling Leanne earlier that if, when I met with her in May 2019 about what it's like to be a school member, if I would have known that I would be voting on things that would decide whether people could potentially catch a disease that could kill them, I don't think if I, I would have run for school board necessarily. I think that people should hopefully allow grace to the school districts around the country that have to be making these decisions right now. It's really yes. I will agree with you on that. I hope our community can stand with us as we go down this path because it's not of our choice, but it's where we have to be. So, anyone else? So, on behalf of the whole board, I want to thank uh, all of the admin staff and, and Dr. Quinn. I know how hard you're working. Uh, I know your commitments are putting health and safety first, and I think this clearly does that. So, uh, we know these decisions aren't made lightly or casually. So, thank you for the deliberations that you've had and the difficult choices you've had to make. And we appreciate your leadership for the um, kids in our community and for our staff and for our families. So as I said, when we started, this was a one item agenda. And as such, we have completed that item. So at this point, um, I'll adjourn the meeting and thank you for your participation. 
the next meeting of the Ferndale School District is our Ferndale School Board is scheduled for Tuesday, August 18th. Since the state has once again extended the changes to the Open Public Meeting Act uh, rules to ensure safe meetings during the pandemic, uh, this time through September 1st, our meetings on August 18th as well as August 25th will be in the Zoom format just like this one. Thanks again, and uh, hereby I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you all very Thank much. You. Take care. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.